everyone is affected by violent movies, whether you watch them or not. This can affect and cause spouse battering, road rage, and school bullying. This is how it goes. In a study done at a university, two groups of students were shown movies. One group was shown a violent movie, another group was shown a non-violent movie. After the movies, they filled out a little questionnaire, and they thought the experiment was over, but it was not. Over the next few days, they all applied for different courses that they wanted to take, and all of them were told that the courses were canceled. Those who had seen a violent movie a few days prior reacted with anger, and the others did not. In another study, there was a theater showing both a violent movie and a non-violent movie, and the people would exit onto the sidewalk, of course. And out on the sidewalk, there was an actor with a fake broken leg, a fake cast on his legs, and two crutches. He was kind of pulled up on his crutches like that. And he would accidentally drop his crutch and need someone to help him. The group that came out of the violent movie took eight seconds longer to, re to react, to help him. You might say, well, no one was killed. No one was beaten up, it's not so bad, what's the big deal? But is that what we want? A world that's less caring? A world that's less loving? less friendly. Here's how school bullying can happen as a result of violent movies. Let's say there's a family, a father, a mother, and a boy about 12 years old. The father, let's say, watches violent movies sometimes, and this influences his behavior with his wife. And sometimes he pushes her around, and even beats her maybe. The 12-year-old boy observes this. And when he's at school, what does he do? He pushes around smaller kids because they're easy to push around. Vulnerable kids. In England, a couple of years ago, I don't know if you guys heard about this, there were two kids, about five and six years old, who killed a three-year-old child. Did anyone hear about that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why did that happen? These were little kids. I don't know, but I do know that some cartoons are violent. Were they watching violent cartoons? I don't know. In extreme cases, kids go to school with guns with terrible, terrible results. And you might say, well, that doesn't happen here though. Did you know about two years ago a teenage boy in our fair city was apprehended with a gun and a list of names. He had over a hundred kids and people and teachers that he was going to kill. He was apprehended. And it didn't happen, luckily. So it can happen anywhere. I was in a store one time and I saw this boy about 12 years old buying a DVD. I had looked to see what it, was, <clears throat> what it was about and the title was something about death and revenge. And I looked at my watch and it was about 1.30 in the afternoon on a school day. And he was going to go home I guess and watch this video and he was buying it, not renting it. It's very significant because if he's renting it He'll watch it and take it back. Buying it, he's going to watch it over and over and over again. What's this kid going to be like when he's 15 or 16 or 20 or 25? And you might say, well, he's not my son. My son was at school. Yeah. But does he go to the same school as your kids? If you're a teacher, is he one of your students when he's 22 or 25? This affects everyone. George Bush was elected by a slim majority twice. He was known for his bomb now and talk later mentality. Were there some people who watched violent movies who also had this attitude that 
violence is the way to go. When you don't know what to do, when you want to get what you want to get, you use violence. Did some of these people vote for him? He got in by just a little bit. Some people say, well, there's other studies that show violence movies are okay. And I call these studies the stupid studies. <laughs> and they go something like this. During a time when there's a big hit violent movie on in a city, it's screened at many, many theaters all across the whole city. They monitor how many 9-11 calls there are for domestic violence and how many emergency visits there are for wounds and so on. And there are fewer. So these people say, well, isn't that good? The violent people are in the theater better than being out on, their street, out on the street, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they do go out after a while, don't they? I call that perverted logic. Film students, Vancouver's a big, big film school. Did you know Vancouver Film School is the largest film school in the world? People come from all over the world. It's the fifth largest import thing in BC, I think, something like that. And there's film schools all over the place. And at a typical film school, to graduate, you have to make a little movie. It's part of your thing, a little demo thing. Right now, these young filmmakers, the majority of them, and I'm saying this again, the majority of them make a violent demo reel for the graduation project. I started something called the Nonviolent Movie Foundation. You can find it on Google, it's something I really believe in. It has more about what I've been saying today. <coughs> and this foundation, the intent of it is to encourage new filmmakers to make nonviolent movies. The other way to get people to make nonviolent movies is to kill all the people who make violent movies. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you'll think about this the next time that you experience road rage or an angry person in a 7-Eleven and know that we're all victims. <laughs> <laughs>